everyone. My name is Brittany, and I'm a senior keeper here at the Franklin Park Zoo. With me today is Nicole, who's also a zookeeper Everett. here at the Franklin Park Zoo. And joining us are Kanunu and Everett Warthog. I'm going to do a quick training session with Kanunu. We're going to do some injection training to practice for her vaccines. Um, Nicole will be able to answer questions and describe while I'm, what I'm doing while I'm focusing on Kanunu. And right, Kanunu, you ready? You follow? All right. So as mentioned before, Kanunu is in the shoot right now. She is nine years old. I'm over here with Everett, he's six. So all that shoot is that I'm talking about is a log there. And that log helps them line up nice and straight next to the trainer so that the trainer can get a nice close look at the warthog. So what else is going on over here is that Kanunu has a station. So what that is, it's just a little name card for her essentially that tells her where her face should be and also who she should be hanging out with. So her station is a purple round card. Everett over near me has a green bow tie. So they know that if Everett sees a bow tie, that's where he should be hanging out. So she's currently lined up in her shoe, and she's receiving reinforcement for that. Right now, her keeper, Brittany, is asking her to back up. She's really excited to do the station behavior, so it looks like she doesn't want to back up. There we go. Once we remove that station, she backed up really well for her keeper. So we want them to be able to move in and out of that station comfortably. Uh, so we'll practice that before we even start working on more complex behaviors that we'd be doing in the shoe. So some behaviors that we do in the shoot with them is we want to be able to examine their whole bodies. Maybe we want to be able to touch, touch different it. parts of their bodies. Uh, so right now, Brittany is touching Kanunu's hip. Now, a good reason we want to be able to touch their hip is for injection training. So if we can apply pressure with our finger, we can slowly desensitize that sensation and eventually use a dull needle, which is, um, and right now she's using the back of a target pole. So normally with our warthogs, we'd give an injection using a pole syringe. So she's um, practicing that there. And then we'll use a dull syringe and then eventually we'll use an actual syringe. So these guys do receive um, vaccinations. I'm not, I can't remember if it's every year, uh, but they are totally comfortable with it. They know they get good snacks for that. Uh, today on the menu, we have carrots and sweet potato. Sweet potato is, I've got to say, their absolute favorite. Everett's being a real champ over here eating some <laughs> carrot. Uh, other parts of their diet that we don't necessarily use in training are a grain that they get to supplement, you know, what they'd be getting naturally and um, those important um, nutritional needs for them. They also get uh, a grass, which we give alfalfa to them. They also um, can get Timothy hay. Station. And we also give them other greens, such as um, <laughs> romaine is their favorite. Station. We've tried offering them kale and collards, and they're not as much of a fan. Uh, pigs generally do eat everything, <laughs> but they like to eat grass on exhibit. When you come visit, you'll see them eating grass, uh, which grows really well around here. Hip. So right now, Brittany's asking for hip again. So you saw that Kanunu scooted over. Can't so she it. knows that if she moves towards the fence line, she'll get reinforcement. Uh, so that's pretty impressive, I find. And we capture that just by, uh, you know, if they offer it, we'll click. So you might have heard her click. And that click means that the animal did something right, and they'll be receiving reinforcement for that. Uh, and then we can shape it eventually from maybe just a little sway movement to a bigger step movement in the right direction. And when you think about it, if an animal's moving towards you, they're making the decision whether or not they want to participate, whether or not she wants to receive that injection. So she feels like that's worthwhile to, you know, sweet potato is worth the little poke of a needle maybe. These guys really seem to enjoy training. Um, most pigs are really, really intelligent, so these guys are no exception. They're very, very smart. I'm going to finish up. All right, so uh, Brittany's ending her session oh, over thank there. You. Good girl. We try to keep it really short just so that it's nice and positive for them and oh, it thanks. ends on a good note. 
Uh, I think <laughs> after this session today, we're actually going to be tossing them some green so they can forage around and you guys will get a good look at what that looks like. They're ready and waiting. <laughs> so like I mentioned before, they get greens. So today we get some romaine lettuce for them that we'll throw over. Extra bonus snacks. Oop. There they go. <laughs> <laughs> Not much of a forage there, but whole heads are fun to eat too. So when these guys are foraging, they can be, you know, they have pretty strong nout, snouts and they can be, you know, rooting in the ground, looking for things and push the dirt around with their noses. Everett's got a nice piece of romaine <laughs> right on his back there. Everett was using his nose to tear apart the leaves. He steps on the, the butt of the lettuce and then uses his nose to tear the leaves off. We had a question about if we trim their tusks. We do not currently trim their tusks. That's something that we've talked about. As you can see, Kanunu's tusks are very circular and growing back towards her snout. Um, so that's something we are keeping an eye on because they do grow forever. Um, but currently, they, we don't do that. Um, in the wild, they wear them down naturally by rubbing against logs and rocks and looking for food and digging in the dirt. Um, Kanunu did break one of her tusks recently, so that's also something we're keeping an eye on. For now, though, it makes it really easy to tell them apart. She's missing one of her right tusks. How often do you do these training sessions usually? As often as we can. <laughs> um, there's two trainers on their training team right now, me and senior keeper Kayla. Um, Kayla works with them more often than I do. I work to support Kayla when I can. Um, she is shaping several behaviors with them, um, like hoof trimming with Everett right now. Um, and she's trying to prepare Kanunu for ultrasounds, voluntary ultrasounds in their barns in case we ever need to do an examination for health reasons. Do they have other favorite treats or special enrichment that you give them during they, training sessions or otherwise? Their favorite, honestly, is the sweet potato, uh, which is a normal part of their diet. They get that every day. Um, but we'll often give them other kinds of fruit or different kinds of browse, which is edible plants that we harvest in and around the zoo, um, like knotweed, for example. Um, we'll often try to hide their food in different ways so that they have to work for it a little bit and think about it, um, keeps them busy longer. Um, and we'll, we'll forage feed them too so that they have to search around the exhibit just like they would in the wild, look for their food. Is anybody going to eat that leaf on your back, Everett? <laughs> that was another question. If it was Everett, <laughs> that had the lettuce on his back. That, that is Everett. That has the lettuce on his back. It will fall off eventually, or maybe Kanunu will eat it. Hopefully it's not still there at the end of the day. What about this one? No. <laughs> Can you do right now is eating the grass that's in the exhibit. So they'll, they'll go through and eat the tasty things that grow in the exhibit as well. And they trim it right down to the ground. We rarely need to mow in here, um, but you can tell which plants they like and which they don't very easily. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's honestly impressive how good they are at finding the things that they want to eat you know, in the mix of grasses that grow in the exhibit. They'll just nibble around the, the things they don't want. And how old are they? They are, Kanunu is nine years old and Everett is six years old. Do they vocal? <laughs> we had a question about if he sounds like the Pumbaa and the Lion King. Mm -hmm. They do vocalize. They sound a lot like domestic pigs. They kind of snort and grunt and uh, they don't blink exactly, um, they, but they'll squeal. Um, Everett, um, when he's trying to get Kanunu's attention, will make this sort of clicking sound. Um, 
it's hard to describe, but it's all, it's almost like when you're you're clicking with your tongue against the roof of your mouth, like it's like very very rapid kind of quiet clicking. It's really interesting, um, and you can you can hear it easily from wherever they are in the exhibit. So it's not exactly quiet, um, but compared to some of their other sounds, <laughs> they're. Um, they're not. Um, Kanunu used to live here with her sister, Alani, who sadly passed away. Um, and so Everett was brought here from another zoo in Arizona to be her friends so that she would have some company and wouldn't have to be alone. Her name, her name, he likes it all furry. Why does he have a nice on his back? We were forage feeding them, so we threw some greens into the exhibit over the fence and a leaf just happened to land on his back um, and neither of them has eaten it yet. <laughs> oh, he's, he's, wear, he's wearing his lunch. I don't even think he noticed yet. Wow, wow. Maybe it would be nice and cool and it cooled him down for the day. Anything else you want to say about these guys before we sign off? Um, just, they're incredibly smart. They're a lot of fun to work with, and they're right near the entrance to the zoo. So you know, make sure you come and say hi when you're here. You can say hi to them by name, call the Kanunu and Everett, and I'm sure they'll look up. <laughs>